Hello and welcome everybody. Today I'm going to talk about forgiveness and more specifically forgiving yourself and like what is the bigger implication of forgiveness in our lives. And so I'm going to start talking about the seven obstacles to forgiveness. And and what I really mean by that is like, what are the things that get in the way of us forgiving ourselves? And so the first one I have on the list is all about judgment. You know, it's like, we're, we're constantly criticizing ourselves and judging ourselves for the things that we've done in our past. And in order to get into true alignment, and when I'm talking about alignment, I mean, in order to get into alignment with our dreams, our desires, our purpose, our things that we're truly, truly meant to do in our lives, then we cannot get into true alignment if we have things in our past that we have not forgiven ourselves for. This is so very important to understand because like I've been really concentrating um, since the beginning of the year on my concept about purpose. And when I say purpose, I don't mean the purpose that's this elusive thing behind a curtain that we have to go through some sort of struggle or journey in life to connect to. I mean, the true purpose comes from what is already inside of you. And in order to connect to that purpose, it's just important that we get our lives into alignment. And so whenever we have this judgment, it's like we're constantly judging ourselves for the things that we're doing. I mean, in, almost in every moment, one time I took a measurement of um, how often I was judging and within one hour, I kid you not, I had already made hundreds of judgments. And so judgment is definitely the first obstacle to forgiveness. Uh, the second obstacle, and this has to, this is all tied, these are all tied in and sort of looped around each other. But you know, really we grow up and we're taught a set of morals and principles. And with the morals and principles that we have in place, whenever we do something that's outside of those morals and principles, it can be very difficult for us to actually just live with the fact that we did whatever that thing was that we did. So if I were to ask all of you right now to make a list of all of the unforgivable things that you've ever done in your life and you took you took a look at that, my guess is that the things that are the hardest for you to forgive would be the things that are outside of your own like circle of morals and values, okay? So yeah, that can be super, super difficult. But hey, if you don't know me or we've never met before, my name is Mary Shores and I am the best-selling author of the book, Conscious Communications, your step-by-step -step guide to harnessing the power of your words to change your mind, your choices, and your life. And I can teach you these things because I truly believe, and it's backed by science, that you can change your reality with just your words. So if you can hear me okay, go ahead and click the like button and let me know where you are listening for, from. I am from Champaign, Illinois. So right now it's all cor cows and cornfields and lots of rainy, rainy wetness, cold, cold rain. All right. So getting back to the seven obstacles of forgiveness. We've talked about judgment and I was talking about your morals and values. So if you take a look at this list of unforgivable things, things that you're, you're, you're holding this in your body. If you don't forgive yourself for it, you're holding it in your body. And I guarantee you that it's keeping you out of alignment. So whenever spiritual teachers or personal development growth teachers are talking about alignment, a lot of times we're always focused on thoughts, words, feelings, and actions, because that is what equals our results. But there's this other part of it that is what we feel inside, because we all know we can have a dream, we can have an aspiration, we can have that thing that we want to achieve, but if we don't believe we can achieve it, then it'll never happen. It doesn't matter how much you think about it. It's not going to happen if you don't believe it's going to happen. But what gets in the way of the belief is something that you've done. You know, we, we people talk about having blocks. It's not a block. It's yourself judging your past and not forgiving yourself for things that you may have done in your past that you perceive to be unforgivable. So if we make a list of all of the unforgivable things that we've done in our past and look at them, you know, the second obstacle to forgiveness is very likely that the thing that you've done, whatever it is, whatever is this unforgivable thing, if it's outside your circle of your own morals and values, it's going to be easier for you to hold on to that guilt, easier to hold on to that shame, and harder to forgive yourself. 
But if you don't work on forgiving yourself, and I don't mean just saying the words, I forgive myself. I mean literally taking accountability for what you've done and releasing it and saying, I, I really forgive it. It's gone. It's I, I release it from my, my past, my history, like as if it never happened. You know, the third obstacle for forgiveness is attachment. We're attached to these things that we've done in our past, okay? So we're we're constantly cycling through, rejudging ourselves for them or thinking, you know, it really keeps us from feeling like we deserve something that's truly in our path. And the things that are on your path are the things that the universe has aligned to you because those are the gifts that you were born with. You were born with gifts that you're meant to bring into this world. Okay, so if you if you have a dream, if you have a desire, then you have a purpose. If you have a skill, whether that skill is writing, teaching, if you're a healer, if you're a light worker, if you bake the best cookies on the planet. I talked to somebody one time and she said she makes the best poached egg in the world. And I mean, wouldn't that be fun, right? So, okay, if you can hear me okay, go ahead and hit the like button. I'd love to know, or if you have any questions or comments, I would be happy, happy, happy to address them. All right, the next obstacle after attachment. So attachment is when we're really, you know, we're attached to these mistakes, the things that we perceive as mistakes in our past, okay? When we're attached to them, that is what is creating these so-called perceived blocks. Okay, you don't have a block. You just need to forgive yourself. You need to forgive yourself so that you can truly align with the thing that you want to align with, all right? The next one is shame. So when we're holding on, when we're attached to the thing that we need to forgive ourselves for, you know, whatever that may be, you know, there, there's been times that I've struggled in my life with decisions I've made as a parent because I have a child on the spectrum. And especially in the early days, I didn't know that he was on the spectrum and I thought I had behavior issues. And so for years, I carried a lot of guilt um, at some of my reactions to the behaviors. I mean, whatever those things may have been. And so now, even though it's 10 years later, 15 years later, I'm still attached to something I did 15 years ago. It's that attachment to the thing that I did that is stopping me from truly forgiving myself and moving on, moving on so that I can be in alignment with what I'm supposed to do in this life. You know, in order to in order to really forgive ourselves, we have to step into a certain level of vulnerability. And what I mean by vulnerability is in order to forgive ourselves, we actually have to be responsible for the thing we did. We're responsible and we're accountable for our actions that we've taken. And that can be a scary, scary thing because, you know, Sometimes we're in denial and we don't want to really be accountable or responsible for the thing we did. What we want to do is we want to blame another person. We want to blame another situation that that was the cause of it. But truly, in order to forgive ourselves, first we have to accept responsibility for the thing that, that happened. Whatever it is that your choice or your perceived choice that you think made you so wrong. In order to forgive yourself, you know, when you step in to the responsibility, when you take responsibility and you're accountable, it makes you the authority in your own life. And when you are the authority in your own life, then you understand that you are the one creating your life in every moment, in every day, in every thin sliced moment of life. You are making choices that are building your life around you like an architect or like playing, playing with Legos. You're just, you're completely building it. All right, so when you can truly be responsible for the choices you've made, then it takes a certain level of vulnerability to actually be able to forgive yourself because admitting that 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 you did whatever it is that you need to forgive yourself for. So again, you know, if you make a list of all of the unforgivable things that you've done in your life and you're looking at them and you are thinking that in no way, shape or form could you ever, ever be forgiven for these things. You know, if you, if you grew up in a household that was Christian at all, you were taught the importance of forgiveness and that you really needed to pray for forgiveness every night. And, and like we were asking God or Jesus or whatever for forgiveness, but it's really yourself. The person who needs to forgive you is you. You need to forgive yourself. I'm talking to you. 
you need to, on me, I'm talking to myself. I need to forgive myself for the things that I've done in my past so that I can truly step into alignment and, and create the future because I am the authority of my own life. I am the only one in control. I am in control of my relationship decisions. I am in control of what I do with my career and my finances. I am not a victim. And so when you are not forgiving yourself, you're making yourself a victim because you think that it was some external thing that caused you to make the mistake. So being accountable, there's a level of vulnerability it takes to be accountable. Okay. And then the next thing, which is um, actually fear, you know, how, why would we be afraid to forgive ourselves? Well, I think that, and, I, and again, this is still just some teachings that I'm unpacking now, so I don't have, I don't have the full thought process yet, but the fear might have to do with when you can really forgive yourself and step into the true power that you are meant to, meant to align to, what if you are afraid of that power? Marianne Williamson used to say, that our greatest fear was that we were powerful beyond our imagination. I don't think I got the words exactly right there, but something about we are powerful beyond what we can ever imagine, okay? But you won't step into your power if you're feeling shame and you're feeling judgy and you're attached to the things that you've done in the past. I don't care what you did yesterday. I don't care what you did last year. I don't care what you did five years ago, 10 years ago, okay? It's time to forgive yourself because whatever unforgivable thing you did, it is not happening in this moment. It's not happening right now. So, okay, we went over judgment. We went over the circle of morals and values and principles. Like, you know, when you've done something that's outside of the scope of your own morals and values, you're gonna perceive that as unforgivable. Talking about attachment, attachment meaning that if you have an attachment to something that you've done from your past, it's going to make it difficult to forgive yourself because you, you're, you're mentally, it's a mental attachment, okay? Just like you can be attached to a person or a situation, you can be attached to, to a mistake that you've made in your past. Like, oh, I can't have this thing because I made this mistake umpteen million years ago. All right. And then that leads to a shame. You're keeping yourself in a level of shame and unworthiness. You're spiraling through the shame cyclone to where you feel unworthy to align properly with your gifts. It takes a real level of vulnerability. You have to step into true vulnerability in order to be responsible and accountable for things that you've done. Because in order to, in order to forgive yourself, you truly, truly need to be accountable for them. And I know that that might sound harsh, but just think about what I'm saying. If you've not accepted the fact, if you've not taken accountability or responsibility for what you've done, then how can you forgive yourself if you're not even admitting that you did it? Okay. So just own it because that's what makes you the authority. If you, are, if you are not accountable for your own actions, then you have just given your power to someone else. You are the authority of your own life. You are the only responsible party, the only accountability partner that matters. And you're the only person that you need to forgive yourself. So I ask you today, in this moment, are you willing to forgive yourself? What are you willing to forgive yourself for? I know myself tonight, I am going to sit down and I am going to write a list of all of the things that I perceive that I have done that I feel are unforgivable. And I'm going to stare at that list and I'm going to find out that I can forgive myself for every single one of those things. So I just want to say, a shout out to uh, my very good friend, Guy Murray from uh, Hay House Publishing, very, very favorite uh, customer service rep. And I will be seeing you on March 1st when I come to Hay House headquarters and teach a workshop there. So exciting. So if you have any questions, you know, please let me know. 
please uh, like my Facebook page under Mary Shores, follow me, and um, I'm going to continue this discussion because it's an important one and it has to do with alignment. You know, alignment is so much more than what we've been taught. It's more than just your words and your actions and your thoughts. It's more because we have to release these things that are harboring inside of our bodies. They're down, they're down in you. They're impacting you on a cellular level and they're, they're manifesting in your life because, you know, have you ever noticed how you make the same mistakes over and over and over again? And it's like it becomes these patterns. We have this patterning that manifests year after year. We're making the same mistakes. I know that I've made the same mistakes in relationships for like the past 15 years. And I sit there and I want to pull out my hair. But it's because I haven't forgiven myself. I need to truly forgive myself for the mistakes that I've made. Because you know what? That is what led me to believing that I was unworthy. That's the moment that I didn't think I was good enough for a right partner or a right career or you know making my dreams just come true in general so all right thank you everyone and i will see you next time hey this is mary thanks so much for watching check out a free chapter of my book conscious communications at maryshores.com forward slash free chapter the link is in the description below